the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is Lord. See, one of the deception of greatness is the presence of many material things material things have such jealousy they will fight your loyalty for god let that car arrive and you will see how much your heart was connected to it the moment the tire busts you can't even pray until they fix the tire the tire of that car remember you rolled around when you were just taking a cab and say lord everything to you by the time you build a business and you hear that the stocks of your company are about to crash and God says go and fast for five days you will lie down and say Lord so is this how my company is going to go down that is the reason why God tells you to eat for the journey is far when he's subjecting you to fasting and prayer listen you don't know what it means to train six children or five children you may not have the time to fast for 21 days again so before the marriage comes he makes you to fast as if he, and you don't god what are you doing to me you are building stamina and energy for the days that are coming god by this teaching this morning is giving someone a definition as to what has been happening to you god i'm not seeing any result but you will say fast just when I'm done, you give me two weeks break. You say, start another one. Why is that so? Because you will be so busy. You will be so busy. There are, you will have to lean on your, the, 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 the prayer bank that you have built for years. The word bank you have built for years. Hear what the Spirit of God is telling you. You're not listening to a lecture. Yes, sir. Mm. There are some of you, because of the kind of wealth that God is going to be committing to you, the nature of your training will almost frustrate you. You will find out that you are wealthy, you are earning a salary of 200,000, and God can say so everything. You know why? Because compared to what is coming in the future, what you are saving is nonsense. God is using what you have to keep training you. Lord, what, what is this now? You told me to sow 200,000, and then my arrears just came. You are saying, sow it again. It does not make sense. It will make sense when a billion dollars come. That training will make sense when you become a captain over conglomerate and God will say so for this mission field. You have been trained already. Listen down. God is training you to be a prophet and in the process of knowing him, he will allow you to make certain mistakes deliberately. You will stand in the midst of people and say who is John here and there is nobody who is John. And truly, you believe that you had that name john it will sting your ego so that pride will die the day that prophetic grace begins to work you are no longer conscious of your reputation your awareness of obedience is greater than your validation can i tell you the truth treasure your scars 
they will be the anchors for your remaining in the future treasure your scars when we get to heaven today there is only one person who has the scar that is branded that calls him the Christ you will not know Jesus just by the crown on his head look at the hands of everybody and their feet there is only one who has that unique scar your scar can give you a place in destiny what you are ashamed of today will become your crown tomorrow yes sir I hope God is speaking to someone tonight listen most times when people come to me <laughs> you know I love people and when they come sincerely the first thing they want to do is to receive anointing and they kneel down and say I ask them what do you want some of you four times the four but now that's that's how many portion now double portion is two double double portion now that's quadruple portion four and I look at them with love and compassion and mercy is this how you want to destroy yourself double portion Elisha asked for double portion he did not know what he asked for look at how he died Elijah did not die oh. Elijah went to heaven but the one who asked for double portion did not master the law of life look at how he died sickness kept following him because it was dominion over death that took Elijah to heaven and Elisha asked for double portion he did not know the attack that was looking for him he died of sickness the Bible tells us what killed him so for those who have been crying for three times the anointing of Elisha show me the books you are reading show me the experience you are having with God I want to walk in the healing anointing go and read about healing evangelists most of them did not live more than 80 years are we together because you see the core area of your anointing is where satan attacks he sends spirits to make you a victim of your call this is how satan works if your call is unto healing and the rest you must master living in health and the administration of the life of god if your call is to bring people towards holiness and righteousness you must master the art of circumventing delilah there are people who follow certain anointings spirits is God giving us intelligence listen let me tell you by the privilege of God's grace I've had the honor of being with many fathers of faith in this nation and when I have the privilege of talking with them more than the things they are saying I am observing observing I can tell you that they have such a deep experience with God deeper than most people know what we do on stage only accounts for 30 percent of ministry I hope you know that a major part of your life must be behind the veil that is what strengthens what you do in the presence of people here I've had the honor of meeting very wealthy people multi-millionaires in all kinds of currencies and when I sit with them, especially some of them who are very, very wealthy and love God, my goodness, the level of consecration, some of the rules that God had to create in their own lives, you would think God were too strict, but that is exactly what kept them and is still keeping them. When you begin to walk with God, when you learn doctrine and you rise to a particular point, listen to me, let me tell you what God begins to do. God will begin to introduce unique rules based on the vulnerabilities he sees in your life. If he studies you and finds out that, look, it looks like you, your weakness is women. For instance, God is going to put a unique rule in your life that applies to only you. In a way that if somebody looks at you, he will say, Kai, but God, this is unfair. God knows what he's stopping. And once you walk with that mold, you will find out that you will circumvent that weakness and you'll be able to be great. There are others, your weakness, you are a man of God. Even if a lady walks naked in front of you, it does not affect you. But if you see an envelope, even if you are passing and you see an envelope on the ground, you must pick it and check what is inside. Watch this. I know you are laughing, but pay attention. Are we together? Are we together? 
so God knows when the devil wants to destroy you he can bring enemies in the name of members for only one year who are millionaires but carry within them the spirit of your destruction if you have not gone through the school of the spirit that has purged you and broken you to a point where you lose an appetite for those things so God can give you rules like you will not have more than four cars at any point in your life your wife will say what kind of a husband are you they gave us 10 cars you gave away six why and you say I have a covenant with God God told me I will at any given point I will only have four cars it is not a doctrine it is a training God has vetted you in the spirit and I found out that if you have more than that that is that is the gauge of your discipline if it crosses that it can do something to you is someone learning there are people no matter how they fast and pray they will not be able to pack a stadium to talk to the people the reason is because what will happen to you after that meeting because of your low level of prayer your low level of consecration God will have to respect the allowance you have given him in your life he will not expose you to battles that are beyond your level of spiritual preparation Is this making sense to you so the higher you want to rise that's what I'm trying to say you must have a deep and a rich experience with God there are levels when you get to with God it no longer becomes an emotional dealing it is a covenant there are certain things when you do with God God will bring a sworn blessing upon you because you have gone this far I swear by my name that in any good state you will never beg for bread again to your children's children you see when you see people come with certain transgenerational blessings they didn't come just by dancing around and say God sent <clears throat> it was an experience with God when Abraham took his child only child and placed that child he actually was going to kill the child in fact he actually killed the child because when the child dies in your heart, he really died. Romans chapter 4 already tells us his contemplations that Abraham planned to kill Isaac. Then when he's done, he'll say, I've obeyed you. Please raise my child back to life. Let me go back home with him because I don't know what to go and tell his mother. I know we easily say Abraham gave up Isaac. Women, mothers, do you know after waiting 25 years? Honey, where are you? And the uh, the aides they are not all the aides to have gone home because they went with him Abraham was already ready for his marriage to fail because if you are a woman if that kind of husband comes back let me see the hand that prepares the food for him and he says honey um, let's just kneel down and give God thanks in this our generation that is over before he even arrives You have to read the scripture with your mind too. So you don't know what he was willing to lose as he carried Isaac. Do you know what it means? It's a different thing that they murdered your son. But that you killed him by yourself. For the rest of your life, you will not be normal again. You will hear the voice of your son day and night. Even if it is after 100 years. Father, what is this? The, the people who would have killed Abraham himself were the servants. Among those servants, there will be loyalists of his wife. Somebody will say, let's kill this man. Because we can't stand the shame of telling the wife that we escorted the husband. We've not only lost our jobs, we've lost our lives too. Let's kill him so that we all die here. And Abraham said, it does not matter. Let's go. And God was watching. The first and only man that acted what he will be doing himself when he put Abraham on that altar he lifted the knife with the tears in the son's eyes he still did not stop it was God who had to say stop my question is what if Abraham did not know how to hear God let me repeat it again there must have been a tribal and see before he gave him that instruction there was a training on hearing God 
what if Abraham the life of Abraham and his son was at the mercy of a particular training that he went through jumping the school of the spirit is dangerous because something you are learning today is what will make another training tomorrow make sense what if Abraham could not hear God and he finally killed Isaac he would have written a book that God is a killer whereas God said stop the problem was his hearing the same way God told you in business stop but when God was training you to hear him you did not hear God told you have only three children you had the fourth one now the fourth one came with trouble because you did not hear we keep blaming God on many things but simply because we could not stay in the school of the Spirit. Please listen carefully. Yesterday, we spent, we spent quite some hours in the airport before we came. They kept shifting the flight. I got up early in the morning and while I was praying, I sent my airport people a, I sent them a text. I said, I sense that we're going to travel in the afternoon. I've already had that sense and I kept seeing a plane in my vision and I saw the sun while the plane was going and I know this is not morning. I said, no, 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 the flight is in place. I already prepared my heart. I said, Lord, whatever it is, I give myself joy. I stayed for five hours in the airport but I was already I had already prepared what to do so there was no disappointment because somewhere in my training he had taught me how to know when he is speaking there are many troubles you get into simply because you don't even know what God is doing are we together now there are times you are about to enter a car that would be the end of your life but because you rejected the training of discernment you are unable to know is this God or is this just my mind in these days leadership and exploit in the spirit will be at the mercy of your experience with God there is something that if you do not know about God will destroy you completely there are men of God who collected money that's what killed them money they should not collect somebody sincerely who came not knowing that that was the deception of jacob and esau and they gave their bet right without knowing and they collected 10 million naira that 10 million naira they collected was the beginning of their downfall but when you walk with god he will train you that as you rise not every gift is for your taking you must have the stamina and the discipline to say no to many good things just because it's good does not mean it is of god you must be trained to know it is not only evil you say no to there are many good things in your life if satan tries to use sin and evil to kill you and you escape he will use good things and kill you the most important thing is that you die doesn't matter with what he uses to kill you are we together my sister you never knew that your assignment is to marry a great man of God who is going to be blessing the world so as a young lady on campus God begins to deal with you in a certain way when a gentleman comes to you and says I like you God says let me not even hear that thing again go back and let's pray I say God what are you doing with me you do not know that he's building capacity because the kind of life and destiny you are going to be part of requires a lot of stamina if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small some of you god knew that you'll be a minister in nigeria you were hoping you would go abroad god said this is your place of assignment nigeria seems to be having problems you stay here this is where your assignment is other people are running God says you are not going anywhere this is your place of stay that was why he taught you on faith he took one year to teach you on faith and you were saying God what is it about faith he said no your kind of faith you don't know the obstacles that will be coming learn faith he will give you instructions to read the books of men of God on faith listen 
don't run away from the training of God. It does not make sense while he's building you, but you stay there. For someone right now, you are a leader, you are a man of God, but God has stopped you from starting a church. God has stopped you from starting a fellowship. All the people you started together with, they have all kinds of ministerial platforms and you are just there to the point that people look at you and say, ah, but there's wisdom. You, you have been serving for three, five years. Why don't you start a little fellowship? And sincerely you want to do that. And God says, no. The reason is because there is something else he has prepared for you. Now, you can force yourself out of the will of God. He will honor you, but you must be willing to bear the consequence. Are we together? The man Gordon Lindsay, Gordon Lindsay who, who founded Christ for the nations, not Christ for all nations, Christ for the nations. For a long time in Gordon Lindsay's life, he only kept partnering with people and ministries. And people looked at him and said, you're a very anointed man. Why don't you have your own platform, you know? And God would not let him. For a long time, he looked like a fool until God finally gave him the allowance. And when he started Christ for the nations, he just spread around like wildfire. Please hear me, great people. End time leadership and end time ministry will not be based on skill alone end time leadership and end time ministry will not just be based on technical academic skills if you were in the days of noah i shared it the last time i was in enugu here if you were in the days of noah and the flood was coming whether you were a professor or you had a store or you had a container to import and export the rain that was coming was coming to sweep everybody there was only one skill that was needed you're hearing god and you're obeying him every time in human history something seems to happen that shows the superiority of a man's spiritual advantage as against any other advantage i know that we live in a world today where we over celebrate intellectualism i'm not against that intellectualism is wonderful there are times we celebrate all kinds of crowns and we make it look like even though you are not spiritual, at least since you are intelligent, it's still all right. When that flood comes, it is not business people who will survive. When that flood comes, imagine that you were in the days of Noah and a flood was coming. Let's assume you just finished dedicating your shop and then the next day the flood will start. You will not be spared simply because your mind thinks well. The flood was going to sweep everything. There was only one man who survived. And he survived on the strength of his relationship. For him to be able to build an ark of Gopher who tells you he was a skilled man. That it took technical skills to make that happen. But it took a spiritual foundation to get the instruction. Leaning on your technical skills alone leadership skills i'm not against it right submit yourself to all of that but please behind everything you do you must know that your experience with god is very very important so as a ceo you sit down and when someone talks about the lord jesus mm -hmm. we're not talking spiritual things here we're talking business really find out how the earth was created the bible tells us that the things that do appear came from the realm of the spirit so any other thing that must appear in your life must come from the realm of the spirit i can tell you the truth my life today the in order of priority the richest advantage in my life is not anything physical in fact i don't trust things that are physical the greatest advantage in my life today is my relationship and my experience with God. That is the commodity and the product that is worth dying for. No matter what else you lose, the honor that you have only comes because he was there and he's there. The lifting that you have, everything that happens in your life. I would be foolish today to trade my experience with God for more ministerial doors. Trade my experience with God for more. No, 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 no. 
I will keep learning. I learn leadership. I train myself, but not at the detriment of the word of God. My first call in this leadership session, go back to the place of your spiritual foundation. I don't care what kind of business you do. I don't care if you are an administrator. You need to be able to build capacity, a deep and a rich experience with God that will now give you the stamina to rise. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on no. It's in your name that we will rise. I don't know. You, you may have heard me say it in my teachings that the Lord told me. He said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. As at the time God told me that thing, I didn't have anything, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing. But I said, even if you never give me anything, my life is committed to revealing you. Do you love him more than your business? Don't just say yes, because God likes these kind of questions. He will test it. Do you love him? If God asks you to shut your business for one month, you know how much you make per day. And God says, for me, shut it down and spend one month. Will you bind and cast that voice and say, God cannot speak like this. Not after what he knows happened to me last year. The jealousy of God demands that he becomes the epicenter of your Christian experience. Not one of the many important things. Please listen carefully. God demands that he becomes the epicenter of your experience. May God forgive me if I'm lying, but I've searched my life. Huh? I do not know if there is anything in my life today that I cannot give God. Like I said, it is by God's grace and mercy, but as far as I know, no. And you won't believe how many things I've laid down to speak like this. When you see God doing great things with men, remember this, this, this minister's conference is to show you the inner workings of the results you see. You don't just stand and say God's power is going to touch somebody. You are not a herbalist. Even a herbalist, go and ask them. They have levels. There are herbalists that are failures. It doesn't mean that just because you are serving the devil, you are successful. It's still the same rule of, of consecration and depth. Herbalists are in levels. There are those that, that you go to and it will still not work because they don't even know the devil. Are we together now? So just because it is Satan you are serving does not guarantee results. No. You need to know the devil deep enough. It still takes this relationship we are talking about. I have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth and found that Babu Wani Kamarka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Wani Kamarka. This song came to me early in the morning. I was in Cameroon and just worshiping the Lord very early in the morning, celebrating His greatness. And then this song came to my spirit. The Hausa part says there is no one like you. That's what it means. I have searched. It took a long search to come to the conclusion that no one is worth my life. So don't tell me why are you so fanatical. I searched. I'm, I, I, my loyalty to God is not in ignorance. I have options but I checked. He is my loving him is a conclusion now you understand that I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched 
all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamara. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamara. Guess what the chorus says? Hey, hey. Babuani Kamaruka Yayes Babuani Kamaruka Babuani Kamaruka Yayes Babuani Kamaruka I will love him in life and I will love him in death call me CEO I am still the lover of God call me a businessman I am still the lover of God call me an apostle and a prophet the noblest title you can give me is the lover of God for that is the realm where no eye has seen that is the realm where no ear has heard neither has it come into the comprehension of men what God has in store not for them that preach not for them that do business not even for them that pray the realm of lovers is the realm of, of a, a, a height that you cannot understand yes. hear me this morning service came to turn you from a businessman to a lover of God from a man of God or a pastor to a lover of God if this is all I achieve and we're not able to touch any other thing within the time left it was a successful thing my assignment this morning or afternoon is not just to come and share with you leadership principles you belong to an excellent church don't tell me you are a CEO. Leave the issue of your container. Are you a lover of God? Leave the issue of your restaurant. Congratulations. Are you a lover of God? Leave the issue of the church that you have. For a minute, forget about your congregation and your desire to build your church and your desire for more land and your desire to find him. No, no, no. Throw all that away. searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched and found that He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Hear me? Most of us, as you are hearing me preach, you need to repent. Because most of us would prefer to be called the CEO of XYZ conglomerate than to be called the lover of God. It looks like an insult. What a demeaning title. Give me something more superior that gives me a standing among my peers. For instance, he owns five conglomerates. He owns this and that. He's a billionaire. He's an intelligent person. Noble descriptions. But nothing comes close to the realm of love. Because when everything failed, it was love that stood. When wisdom failed, love was still standing. Even when faith failed, love was still standing. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Your leadership will be an ineffective leadership. God will not even give you an opportunity to scale the heights of influence until he knows that you love him and you are passionately addicted and connected to him. If I ever give you any secret about my life and the privilege of the bits that God is doing with this man, this is it here. It is beyond the realm of prayer. It is beyond the realm of fasting. It is beyond the realm of Bible study. Go and ask God how much I love him and you will know why he does what he does. Now please listen. When the first lady is not around here, 
but yesterday when your pastor finished introducing anybody everybody even though she's far away thousands of kilometers he still took the time to not even the man of god who came to preach made him forget his wife not even the dignitaries that came made him to forget his wife he had to honor her and you celebrated her there are some people eh it doesn't matter where they are the jealousy of god keeps trailing them like a shadow because of the depth of their love for him so while they are sleeping someone is planning that this man and his children they should not live to survive the end of 2022 god will not even allow you start praying about it he takes that issue personal who did you say you want to kill did the bible not say jealousy is the rage of a man you want to know how angry a man can be you touch his wife most of us have not been able to secure the jealousy of heaven because your love for god is still in question can i tell you only god knows the arrows that fly by day against some of us the noisome pestilence it is only when we get to heaven we will know the amount of things we have eaten that are poisons that should have killed us no matter how intelligent you are we see impact as far as the world of men is concerned when men want to get you only god can save you so if you are standing it's because there's something about your love listen to me any container that replaces god in your life is an idol i don't care if it's bibles that are inside anything that replaces god your business the things you are importing and exporting the restaurants that you have the leadership man of god do you know church can become an idol don't think just because it's a spiritual venture church can become an idol you don't care whether god is there or not your relationship with god can go places provided this the religiosity of the activity is there do you love him don't think God is wasting your time this morning. Do you love him? Many of you have given your heart to people of lesser honor. You gave your heart freely for people whose lives you did not even verify. And here is someone who has assured you that he loves you. And you are still asking questions. Can I trust you with my heart? Please hear me. There are realms of increase. There are realms of finances. I wish sometimes my heart boils to want to give a few testimonies but sometimes even when I give them I listen to the message I still feel guilty again I say I shouldn't have said that I should have just preached I cannot begin to tell you the things that God has done in this life purely a love affair when a man buys something and takes to his wife it's not her birthday it's not any anniversary it's not whatever he just buys a car and gives his wife and she says my husband what is this for he said thank you for being my wife you can stand in anger and say but this is not fair well that's the blessing of taking the risk to be his wife so when you see a man love the lord like a faithful bride don't say why is god blessing this person i can't remember him praying over this thing why did god still answer because in the realm of lovers anything is allowed god can take a man's prayer request of 10 years and give you you can see a man hosting dimensions of grace and glory that does not seem to match your knowledge of him it is the lover who gave him not just the giver a giver can give but when a lover gives he gives to reflect his love are we together I can give you 10 naira as a giver but when a husband gives to his wife he does not give sparing because the gift is supposed to communicate how much he loves her after this meeting you see some of you will go back and the things God begins to do in your life in addition to what you learned yesterday people will ask you and say come what is it about you 
tell them you want to know why God does the things that he does find out my love for him don't just find out my service for him find out my love not just my money not just the things that I do my love for him I've seen what God can do look I have a lot of this my wonderful children and both in Abuja and then Zaria and sometimes when I travel and I'm with them after service that's when their own church starts all they jump in they pray in tongues and do whatever as soon as they say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ they are lining up and waiting to hug me and when they come to hug me they don't care whether I'm tired they don't care whether I've preached that is their own service and they hug and sometimes they ask me to bring my ears down can you imagine that that's the implication of love I bring my ears down and they tell me I want bicycle or with confidence or my birthdays next week sometimes they write me letters they mix all kinds of English and force me to read it that that is how far love can go so two of you can do the same thing it will look like God spares one and the other one is still remaining there because love created exemption for another please hear me return back to your love life any business any church any ministry some of you may need to shut down a few ministrations and say thank god for all the invites church is growing but i need to shut down a bit and spend that time with him and say the lover of my soul i am still here that boy you carried is still there I know today they call me daddy, they call me emoji, they call me prophet, they call me apostle, they call me evangelist, but I have come to you. And God says, you still remember, even after all this lifting, prepare for the next level. I just described myself for you, prepare for the next level, so that when you think you have exhausted these people, oh, they've tried, you see a new layer of glory and grace and signed upon their life will be the lover of their soul hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salman and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye